Because I have prior experience with an RTX 3070 Ti, I went into this review kind of knowing what to expect from a base 3070. However, what I wasn't expecting or really paying attention to is how the price of these cards has evolved since owning said 3070 Ti. So with the new-ish price that the card can be found for on secondhand sites, is it worth considering in early 2025? Well, in some ways maybe not, but in other ways it comes out on top in terms of price to performance. I'd like to start off this video with the fact that I actually want to show you footage of the card so you can see different ports and connectors for yourself. But this card was taken from me about a week ago by someone I was building a computer for. I learned my lesson with that, but that's why I've only got a few pictures of the card on me. Because I only got as far as benchmarking and taking thumbnail pictures with the thing. You live and you learn, but this explains why there isn't as much pretty b-roll in this video. You can thank someone who was a longtime supporter for that. With me being salty out of the way, let's dive into the specs of the test system and see what I paired this card with to get the most performance from the thing. To test out the 3070, let's throw it into my personal system, an i7-14700K base Z690 DDR4 build from last year. Even though we don't have the fastest RAM on the block, coming in at 3600 mega transfers per second, the capacity will really help us to avoid stuttering in games that like to load chunks of levels into memory. Coming in with a 32x2 or 64GB total, kit to support our CPU. To store games, we've got two PCIe 4 compliant NVMe SSDs from Time Tech and Western Digital. So we have plenty of fast secondary storage to load data into and out of. A full system part list will be in the description should you wish to replicate any of these tests. But for the here and now, let's dive into the 3070's performance and see how this card is holding up in early 2025. The first game on our benchmarking suite is Apex Legends, a relatively lightweight first-person shooter built on a DirectX 12 fork of the Source engine. Despite the high settings we're testing at, the 3070 was able to power through at all resolutions, providing a very smooth high refresh rate experience. At 1080p, we saw an average and 1% low of 268 and 176 FPS, which would pair very well with something like a 144Hz display. Jumping up to 1440p, and the average came down to 206 FPS with the 1% low remaining very impressive, coming in at 128. Even 4K returned a high refresh rate experience, with the average and 1% low coming in at 131 and 92 FPS respectively. Would I pick up a 3070 just to play Apex? Well, possibly, but based on what we're seeing here, a cheaper 3060 would probably provide a similarly playable gameplay experience, despite it lagging behind the raw power of the card that we've got here. If you're going to pick up a 3070 and play Apex on it, then you're in for an incredible experience, which sort of sets the precedent for what we'll be seeing from a lot of games we're testing today. Up next is Black Ops 6, and although most of the coverage I've given to this game has been more negative thanks to high compute requirements, but on the 3070 there weren't any issues until we got up to 4K. At the balanced preset and with DLIA enabled, the setup we're testing returned an average and 1% low of 123 and 99 FPS at 1080p, with things remaining very playable when jumping up to 1440p. With the higher resolution returning an average of 87, the 1% low also wasn't anything to complain about, coming in at 70. At 4K, while the maximum frame rate seems to deceptively paint a playable picture, looking at the average of 48 kind of throws out any semblance of playability, with the 1% low of 37 hammering in the final nail in the coffin. This resolution would be a contender for DLSS, but considering we aren't really pushing the quality settings that hard, it's hard to make a case for using the 3070 at 4K and Black Ops 6. 1080 and 1440p are completely playable and very enjoyable, but anything beyond that you're probably going to want to avoid it on this particular card. The next title we're testing today is the DirectX 11 Classic Counter-Strike 2, and at the high settings with the game's implementation of CMAA, the 3070 returned very playable frame rates at all resolutions, though some were definitely better than others. 1080p returned the highest overall performance figures, hitting a 285 FPS average and a 98 FPS 1% low, and the maximum spiking up to 441 FPS. 1440p saw everything slow down slightly, with the average coming in at 246 and the 1% low at 69. Considering the average performance lost about 40 FPS, it's definitely a nice little chunk of frames that you may notice on something like a 360Hz display, 
But if you're being realistic, we're talking the card still achieving over 240 FPS on average, which I'm not going to complain about. 4K saw the 1% low jump up to 80, which is proportionally kind of large when compared to the 1440p figure. But the decreased average down to 172 FPS shows that this card is experiencing overall slowdown thanks to needing to render the increased quantity of pixels. The 3070 is kind of overkill if you're looking to get into CS2, but if you're going to run it anyways, you're going to find it hard to beat, besides maybe a hiccup here and there that happens on really any setup you throw the game at. Cyberbug 2077, one of the more demanding games of the generation, performed pretty well considering what other cheaper cards are able to accomplish. At the high preset with ray tracing turned off and DLIA turned on, the 3070 achieved an average and 1% low of 82 and 54 FPS at 1080p, jumping up to 1440p and things regressed slightly, coming in with an average of 75 and a 1% low of 50. This hints that there's a CPU bottleneck at 1080p, but the lower performance at 1440p hints that the particular bottleneck isn't as much of an issue once you get to higher resolutions. 1440p is definitely still playable, but it also has some strange stutters here and there that are noticeable and make me want to turn the resolution down or enable the LSS. At 4K, things took a drastic turn for the worse, coming in with an average of 38 and a 1% low of 31. I'd probably stick to 1080p with the 3070 if I wanted to play through Cyberpunk, but you could also realistically turn down the settings a lot if you wanted to play at 1440p or 4K. Thankfully it's up to you since this is the PC platform, but overall the 3070 seems to perform well, even though I'm finding out that this game is much more CPU dominant. Up next is a new game in our test suite. What used to be called Delta Force Hawk Ops is now just called Delta Force, and this DirectX 12 Unreal Engine 5 based game actually kind of bucks the UE5 trend that we've seen this generation, with games that look blurry and run poorly. The 3070 was able to play this game very well at the Ultra preset with temporal anti-aliasing, so the game looked very clear and had some high quality texture and effects work. At 1080p, the system returned an average and 1% low of 165 and 82 FPS respectively, with performance only falling to an average and 1% low of 118 and 76 FPS at 1440p. Even 4K was playable for the most part on a 60Hz display, with the average of 63 and 1% low of 39. 4K was hard to complain about in the majority of areas, but there definitely were some dips here and there that were noticeable. I would say for a competitive title like this one, the performance on display is very impressive and I'd happily get into this free-to-play title on this hardware. Up next is the Unreal Engine 5 flagship title, Fortnite. And at the Ultra preset with ray tracing turned off and temporal anti-aliasing also enabled, the 3070 returned a very impressive average and 1% low of 156 and 79 FPS respectively at 1080p, even jumping up to 1440p and the average only jumped down to 101 FPS. Granted the 1% load did fall down to 53, but by and large it was still very playable at this resolution. And finally at 4K things were still playable but definitely not optimal, coming in with an average and 1% low of 57 and 41 FPS respectively. I'd say that the 3070 can definitely power through Fortnite at all resolutions, but if you want to maintain a competitive advantage, then utilizing DLSS and turning a few settings down would probably give you the smoothest experience. The next title we'll be testing is Helldivers 2, and this DirectX 12 based game is pretty heavy weight at all resolutions and settings, almost necessitating utilizing the upscaling feature. At the high graphics preset at the native resolution upscaling preset, the 3070 was definitely playable at 1080 and 1440p but started to fall apart quite noticeably at 4K, achieving an average and 1% low of 99 and 60 nice FPS respectively at the lowest resolution we tested. I'd say that the game is definitely playable but there are some performance issues that arise when a large number of enemies either explode or ragdoll on screen. Jumping up to 1440p, and the 3070 return an average of 76 and a 1% low of 65, once again remaining very playable but also retaining some of the issues with large groups of enemies. 4K saw the worst performance, with the average and 1% low coming in at 47 and 42 FPS. This rather tight grouping indicates that performance was pretty consistent at this resolution, but it's also below where I'd really want to play at if I were playing through this game. I'd probably stick to 1080 or 1440p if I wanted to play through Helldivers on this hardware, but utilizing the upscaling feature is also an option, if you wanted to maintain a native HUD on a 4K display. I would probably turn some settings down as well if you wanted to play this game on the 3070, but considering what we saw, I'd definitely say that things look passable, though maybe not optimal at higher resolutions. The next game is a very impressive Vulcan-based classic, Red Dead Redemption 2, 
tested at the Xbox One X equivalent settings, returned a very impressive array of performance figures that leave me comfortable recommending the game to most users at common resolutions. At 1080p, the card returned an average and 1% low of 146 and 111 FPS respectively, which is high refresh rate playable and also just feels incredible to play on a high refresh rate monitor. Moving up to 1440p and the average and 1% low came down to 115 and 87 FPS respectively. Definitely lower than 1080p but remaining very playable to be fair. 4K saw things regress down to a 73 FPS and 60 FPS 1% low. Once again remaining very playable, though maybe pushing dangerously close to that mark in some instances. I'd say that 3070 can safely play this game at all resolutions if you're smart with your settings, and despite it being one of the best looking games still all these years after release, it also performs incredibly well on modern-ish hardware as well. The final game in our test suite today is another new title, and that's Rust. This DirectX 11 based title admittedly isn't a looker, but this hardcore Minecraft-esque game can be challenging to run in some areas thanks to just how the game environment is laid out. At the high graphics preset and with DLSS disabled, we saw 1080p return a playable average of 138 FPS, but the 1% low came in kind of low from what I remember occurring during gameplay, coming in at 49 at this resolution. Even 1440p and 4K saw the 1% lows look kind of out of place, but I'm still including them for the sake of transparency. Jumping up to 1440p, and the average and 1% low came in at 113 and 48 FPS, still being very playable. 4K saw some weirdness on the 1% lows, with those coming in at 57 FPS, which is higher than any other resolution tested. The average was depressed, only coming in at 80, but the maximum hung closer to what 1440p achieved. This game performed weirdly when looking at things retrospectively, but in the heat of the moment I didn't notice any dips besides when I died or spawned into the game world. Is the 3070 based on how we've seen the card perform? worth checking out in early 2025. Well, that's probably going to be more subjective, but considering you can find these cards for around $300 used, the only comparable cards available at that price point new and are worth considering are the RX 6700 XT and maybe the RX 7600 or RTX 4060. This card kicks the pants off a of 4060 thanks to the much beefier memory interface and overall higher power targets, and it also performs a solid tier above where the 6700 XT comes in at, with that card actually matching the 3060 Ti more closely if you're talking strictly raw rasterization performance. But with the extra performance comes extra power and subsequent heat. The 3070 draws upwards of 220 watts in a normal operation, which for some people isn't a big deal, but it just means you'll need to spend slightly more on your power supply to keep the thing from throttling. Would I say that the 3070 is worth it? Well, 100% I'd say so, but that might not be true for everyone. What I might need might not be what you need, but I'd be willing to bet that a 3060 12GB would be more than enough graphics card for most users, with the 3070 really only being for the really budget ballers that have more to spend. Keep an eye out for the 3070 though, you might not know when a great deal will bite.